so this is a very simplistic <laughs> answer. <laughs> but is it, but a I think is it a defensible answer? Correct. But I, I think I agree with you. We have not done a good job because we are not threatened to a, to a larger extent by them. Uh, the other way around is 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 the true. Basically, they feel that they are threatened by Muslims, hence they start learning about Islam. I agree with you, it's got to be two-way street, it's got to be that we learn about them, instead of just inviting them to our mosque, that we go to their churches and learn about their religion. So there, there's no, uh, I guess there's no good excuse uh, saying that, that we believe in all other religions, we need to get engaged and it is a two-way street. Would you say that now we have with the advent of the internet <laughs> a semi interfaith dialogue by way of e-groups and blogs and other things, you know, it's not structured in, a, in any kind of symmetrical and a consistent fashion as interreligious dialogue, but nonetheless it's taking on the form of interreligious dialogue. It may be 20 people of one faith, one person of another faith, or you know, some other combination, True. yet it requires that, uh, that character and that quality. What's going on in these blogs and what's going on in these e-groups? Do you have any sense of that? Well, um, th there is there is a lot of actually. I'm I'm just amazed to see a lot of initiatives by the Muslim community, even the younger the, the young group actually, MSA and MINA. Um, they're doing a lot of blogs and chatting groups. I mean, I just last week um, uh, there is a family actually in Los Angeles. Uh, I just forget the name, but they are Jewish family, but they are actually engaged in interfaith, and they wanted to. Uh, to have the Muslim community to engage with them and actually they are doing interfaith in the high schools and they have a group of Muslim young uh, students uh, contributing to their block and and, 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 and and you know bringing their point of view on how important the interfaith and things like that I think they were gonna have a booth in the Isna convention actually uh, so I think this kind of efforts is pretty good to prepare the masses this is this is great. I guess we need to also realize that uh, engaging uh, ourselves and our youth in the interfaith should not mean that we uh, drop our understanding of our own religion. We need to understand that there are differences between Muslims, Christians, Jews, Buddhists, and that kind of thing, and that we are proud of, of our own heritage and our own religion, even if we get engaged with, with others. So. Uh, but w one important thing that obviously follows logically from this uh, previous uh, notes, what is the agenda items on these interfaith blogs? What are people discussing? Are they comparing their notion of how life began or how life will end, death, birth, marriage? After all, there must be some kind of a convergence or, or converging item that makes a shorter list of agenda items. I'm not very privy to, to these discussions on the blogs, but I guess for a long time the most discussed items are the, the current items, that uh, the jihad concept and, and uh, uh, the relationship with other religions and that kind of thing. Uh, I, I, and, and I guess rightly so these need to be discussed and these need to be uh, educated upon by, by, by Muslims to others. Uh, I, I guess for, for the longest time I've, I've been uh, privy to these discussions again about the concept of jihad and war and peace and the relationship of Muslims with other Muslims and that kind of thing. Now keep in mind Islam uh, commanded us to do the dialogue. It commanded us to do the interfaith dialogue. It is part of da'wah, in fact, the whole concept of da'wah is the interfaith dialogue. Uh, do not dispute with the people of the book except by means better than mere disputation. And the best amongst you as, oh mankind, we create you from a single pair of a male and female, and we made you into nations and tribes that you may know each other. Exactly. The best among you is the most righteous. So from, from I mean, we are uh, moved into that direction of, of dialogue. And, and interfaith. It is not so much to question the motivation of interfaith dialogue, but ascertain the skillfulness of engaging in that dialogue. I think that's the issue here. And at least be knowledgeable. For instance, you know, there are two distinguished interfaith uh, dialogue uh, uh, practitioners here, and I want to know what are the issues they think communities involved with. For instance, for instance, to me, it looks like one of the blogs on interfaith are focused on meaning of certain surah in the Quran. 
which is good at one level because it may explain certain things. On the other hand, it looks like it's not a dialogue, it is an interrogation of Islam, whereby one party is made to answer, the other party is there to question. So, for instance, I have not seen so far, maybe they are there, I am not saying they are not there, a comparison of the Christian notion of a just war with the notion of jihad. Okay? Or a historical comparison of crusades. Or what is happening in by way of colonial occupation the last 600 years continuing up to this point. So it is not a dual critique where both sides are subject to critique without privileging either side. It's critique of one in the name of dialogue. Correct. Is that an issue that you see as happening? And if so, what's the... What yeah, I mean, uh, you know, for example, with the, with, the, with the Catholic Church, for example, um, there is a book actually is going to be unveiled uh, pretty soon. That book actually discusses many issues, uh, including the issue of violence okay. uh, from the Catholicism perspective and from Islam. Um, what are the, uh, how, how violence viewed in both uh, religion? I think this kind of books, it might be a resource for the, for, for the community. Uh, but but I think uh, I, I want to go to the political aspect of it and how in interfaith and interreligious and building this relationship is very crucial for the Muslim community. I'll give you an example you might not heard of before. Um, three years ago, when Senator Grassley, the chairman, the pre previous chairman of the uh, Senate Finance Committee, and issued a letter and asked the IRS to submit record for 26 or 25. Islamic organizations, including Islam. By the way, the number was the actual number was 200, but it was stated in the media as 26. Okay. So, 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 so he, he wanted that from the IRS. Our relationship with Bob Edgar, the current Secretary of the National Council of Churches, uh, he sent a letter. He, he, he's a previous congressman, he's a former congressman. He sent a, le a letter to, to his colleague in, in the Congress telling them that if you are asking Islam to submit, a record. I am ready to send you trucks of record for the National Council of Churches for the last 50 years. This kind of position is very crucial for us as a Muslim community and because of that great relationship he was able to do this for the Muslim community. Well, I guess the point you, you, you are alluding to is, is very true. That unfortunately this interfaith dialogue at one point over the past several years, because let, let, let's be uh, honest with ourselves, it, it really intensified over the past six years only in, in, in this country. And there's been almost kind of an interrogation of Islam and the standard of Islam on a certain issue, the issue of women in Islam, the issue of jihad, the issue. And I think it behooves us as Muslims is to turn it around. Yes, we agree because there's nothing to hide about the issue of jihad, the issue of women, the issue of all these issues. But we need to ask the questions. What is the issue of, of occupation also in, in all religions? In Islam, uh, Judaism, Christianity and that kind of thing. The issue of, as you uh, mentioned, just war versus this current war that is taking place. Where do these religions stand on this? And, and there's nothing to be ashamed of. We Muslims are ready to, uh, to discuss these things. I think we have not been the ones who set the agenda for the interfaith dialogue. And I think this is a, a, a shortcoming on our part. I think uh, we have not been engaged in, in interfaith dialogue for a long time. Now we are learning. We're the new kid uh, on the block. I think we need to turn it around and start discussing the issues of, of, of the moment. These are the issues that must be discussed in addition to jihad, in addition to women, in addition to, to the verse of the sword, in addition to all these things that need to be discussed on equal uh, footing. I agree with you. Yeah, but we have to understand, Dr. Akha, is that uh, there are certain issues that um, intellectual issues, the issue of jihad, you know, uh, issue of terrorism, and these kind of issues, we need the Muslim scholars and to get together and produce a document, you know, intellectual document from the religious perspective. There are certain issues that can be discussed and can be implemented by the masses, by the Muslim community, and those are the social um,